Don't judge me. You wanted nuclear revenge. If you like cheating revenge stories from Reddit, you found the best place for your vengeful needs. When a wife cheats on her loyal husband, you might automatically view her with contempt or disdain. But in this story, your judgment will be tested. Secondly, a wife cheats on her husband, with 15 people. Followed by a monkey branching cheater, who grabs the wrong branch, with devastating consequences. Lastly, an affair between a cheating wife and her married lover, gets exposed professionally. Before we start, change the like button's email signature, by adding a Rick Rolled link to it. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. These revenge stories, might be disturbing to cheaters. You might hate me after my story, but don't forget, you came for a nuclear revenge story. I'm a 36-year-old male as of now. The characters have been a bit altered by their names. Rebecca is my 34-year-old ex-wife. So Rebecca and I were what you call college sweethearts. We survived college and what you can call, the hardships of young college life. Got married in our early 20s, I was 25, she was 23, ever since we got married, things were rocky from the start. Not from the start immediately, but situation-wise. I was in medical while she was an accounting major. There were things that was okay with me, but was not with her. Despite being married, she acted like she was a free birdie. I have to admit, I didn't saw it as a bad thing back then. So we had her 2016, and she joins a company as an accountant. I was happy because hey, it paid well, and the company owner was James, a college buddy of mine. Time goes by and instead of us growing closer, there was more tension building up. Slowly she started to complain about things that were in place. She didn't like where we lived, had problems with everything I did, stopped liking the food she used to be crazy about, I'm a great cook and she used to love my meals. Our fights intensified by the margin where she would call me names, that I'm good for nothing, that she earned more than me. This by itself could be classified as normal in most relationships, as most people have ups and downs. But if it stopped here, I wouldn't be sharing my story. It all changed when a drastic turn came up, when I got the word of our mutual friends, that Rebecca and James were hanging out with some of them. I found this strange. Why would she go and hang out with him? Why would they hang out together with some of our mutual friends, without me knowing? I confronted both of them, to which they both said it was just a sudden plan and it didn't include me, because I was out working. Coincidentally, it happened on the same day I was out of the city. They might have planned it beforehand, which I'm not sure of, so I think whatever. Next year, enter 2017, the year my marriage blew up. I was sure there was something fishy going on. For the ones who have a relationship, you know it's a red flag when your sexy time life, just dies off completely. I was becoming increasingly paranoid and whenever I tried to address things, I was turned down. I'm not a saint, I started constantly yelling at her to tell me what was going on, because there was something off. Your favorite person in your life rarely talks or does stuff with you, and they claim it's nothing. Does this sound okay? It can't be normal. It should have been our best year, because we both paid off our student loans. We were making our peak financially and it should have been great for us. My friends and I, decided to open up a medical shop that provided medicine. Nothing too big, but as a side venture. One of the friends was Saladin. He proposed that we celebrate it at a pub. When we go there, I notice a girl that looks exactly like Rebecca. It wasn't too alarming, but enough to catch my attention. The woman was dancing with another man and it was quite dark. I get a closer look, lo and behold. It's Rebecca and James, dancing hand in hand. I could say I wasn't bothered much, because they're friends and colleagues right? I'm there with my colleagues, she's there with hers. But of course it was bothering me. So I decide to send her a text, asking where she was, she's usually on her way home at this time. She told me, she was already at home. Now that was a red flag. A big red flag, like it's a communist parade. I told her to stop lying because she wasn't. I could clearly see her getting paranoid and she texted that she was on her way home. She left the pub afterwards. I went home shortly after. On the way back home, I knew I wanted to ask her directly about James, so when I got home, I did. I asked her face to face about James. The look she gave me, was as if she saw a ghost, because she wasn't expecting that question. That look, told me something was definitely up. If you ask your significant other about a friend, they should act normally. 
the way she acted, was far away from normal. She mumbled and played it off, but as I heard her speak I knew for sure already. That night, I decided to snoop in her phone. The curiosity was killing me. We knew each other's passwords, but she changed hers. So I couldn't get in. I got it the next day while snooping. Don't judge me. I really needed to see it. There it was, walls and walls of texts. Countless questionable pictures, degrading comments, even calling him daddy. My wife and I made a vow to each other, that if there was ever anything we needed to explore, we would be transparent to each other. She broke that vow too. She confided in him, about how much of a thrill she felt that night at the pub. I went through everything. What hurt the most, was she herself told me if one of us ever got bored in the relationship, or needed to spice things up, we will let each other know. She destroyed everything. I couldn't look at her the way I used to anymore. I went to bed and just cried deep into the night. I want to tell you that I secretly came up with a master plan to ruin her, but I didn't. I was too angry and emotional. The next morning, I stupidly confronted her without any evidence in my hand. She yelled at me and stormed out after telling me I was abusive and insane. That afternoon, her friends created a messenger group where everyone ganged up to troll me. She apparently told all our friends that I was abusive. When she came home that night, she told me she was in love with James and wants a divorce. I asked her to talk it out first, but it turned into her berating me. I yelled at her, and she didn't think twice to call the cops. When they arrived I was asked to spend the night elsewhere. I went to my sister's and when I returned the next morning, James' car was there. He spent the night here. You're kidding me? It was clear, there was nothing more that had to be explained. He was doing it on purpose. Hell, she was doing it on purpose. I went to see a lawyer. As we did not have a prenup, she already filed a complaint about me being abusive, it didn't look good for me. Not once did she try to apologize. Not once did she try to make amends. Our country law doesn't count infidelity as a fault. So even with that, she's entitled to half of my everything. But her complaint can sue me up. Few days after that, I'm lucky to be able to stay at my sister's house for the time being. I tried contacting Rebecca, but she won't reply to me. Until she hit me up, telling me we should get divorced. That's it. 12 years of relationship, 4 years of marriage and she ends it with a text. On top of that, I was convinced that James was taking my place. First time I saw her after that, she handed me the divorce papers. Everyone from our friend circle was convinced that I was a freaking abuser, and James was her savior. She did the right thing to cheat on me. We were officially divorced during the start of 2018. She was already dating James openly during our divorce. As he was her life and she was doing way better without me. I lost my job, my house, my reputation and some of our mutual friends, all because of her affair and lies. I had to change the city to move someplace else to restart again. Saladin helped me massively in that fresh start. He got me a decent paying job that was nowhere like my previous one, but it was better than other options. We became closer buddies while I was working to earn back what I had. Dating life was over for me. I just couldn't trust anyone. It was a complete no communication between me and Rebecca. Last I heard was she moved in with James. They were doing great. Skip forward some time. End of 2020, my life was actually blowing up. The virus that hit the world forced us to work tirelessly with sore backs, but filled our pockets. Our pharmacy venture turned huge, so I was able to make good money. I met a friend of mine from whom I got a tip, that James and Rebecca were done. Totally unexpected to hear that her hero, James, cheated on her and left her stranded. He left her alone with a child that was surely his. Even worse, he was absent since the baby was born, and didn't even sign the birth certificate to claim his child. So Rebecca is raising that child as a single parent. I heard she tried dating after James left, but she claims she's still not over James, or me. The audacity of this woman. Part of me was happy with the aftermath. But gosh, I have to admit, I really miss to have her around. So the next part might make you cringe. But I sent her an email, asking how she was doing. She wasn't expecting to hear from me. We exchanged mails and reconnected. Our first meet was in 2021, after several years. When I saw her it came as a shock. She looked like shit. She gained weight, lost the charm she had about her, and looked utterly exhausted all the time. She told me about James and reopened the earlier wounds of her cheating and lies. I got a bit of closure, which made me feel a bit better, I guess. She said she was really sorry. 
She wasn't thinking straight about what she was doing to me. James poisoned her mind against me. Frankly, just her look alone, made my blood boil and triggered me into a mood for vengeance. It was obvious that karma got to her already, and the hardship of life beat her down into the position she was in. It should have been enough. But remember the heads up at the start? Yes, even after all she did, I'm an asshole too. You can judge me, but I'm not here for that. I felt the need to take my revenge, and so I did. I wasn't done with her. I told her I would forgive her, if she comes clean to everyone and clears my name. She did that, losing a lot of friends. My name was clean and she took the hit, but she deserved it, because it's the truth. She wanted us to date again. Rekindle what we once had. In other words, force me to raise prick James child. I told her I'm interested into starting over, but I could only agree if we would take it seriously. So we would need to start dating again and think about marriage first. Only then would I legally adopt her child. Seeing the little guy is adorable though, and I had taken a liking to him. Here is the ugly truth. I was already seeing someone. Pretty safe to say, I was cheating on that woman with Rebecca. She was a client of mine from a different country. We were in a long distance relationship. So we were dating, but not totally exclusive, if that makes sense. Her name is Lisa. Lisa was Saladin's cousin. I already told her about what happened beforehand. She was against my revenge idea, uncomfortable with helping me with my intense request. But I managed to convince her to help me. She understood that I needed to go through it. Rebecca and I were living in different cities, so I never moved in with her. But I played it well, by saying I need to travel a lot for business. So I was only getting Rebecca's hopes up, to crush her like she crushed me. The ugly thing is, we were actually being intimate, but we used protection. Rebecca truly felt she found love again. I pushed for her to go to therapy, to get her to deal with her issues. Everyone was commenting how she was becoming better and way more happy now she's with me. She would praise her luck, always followed by apologies aimed towards me. She would start doing things for me, that she did during the times when we were married and in bliss. Trust me when I say, I had a lot of emotions attached to this woman. I reconsidered my revenge, and had doubts about breaking her heart like I fantasized about. It would be bad, traumatizing for life kind of bad. But then I recall what she did to me when we were married. When we had made vows, that she broke. James is an asshole, but she chose to betray me. She didn't reconsider about breaking my heart. So why should I think of hers? So I chose to continue. Her birthday was coming up last year October, lockdown was eased up and my someone, Lisa, was in my city. For the birthday gift, I invited Rebecca for ring shopping. She picked out her favorite ring and I got it wrapped. She was ecstatically happy. That night, she came up to me crying, repeating how sorry she was hurting me the way she did. She looked genuinely remorseful, but I had no feelings for her, except indifference. On Rebecca's birthday, I drove her to our favorite spot. The same spot where we married the first time. It's a beautiful place surrounded by nature. Lisa was already waiting there. So when we walked up to the spot, I introduced Lisa to Rebecca. I introduced her as my girlfriend. Rebecca went white, asking me what I mean by that. She asks what she is then. I then introduced her to Lisa as Rebecca, my ex-wife and friend with benefits. There and then, I proposed to Lisa with that same ring. Rebecca went apeshit and started yelling, to which I replied, how in the hell can she expect us to work out when she nuked everything? I could never date a dirtbag like her again. She repeats questioning if it all meant nothing. I answered by saying repeatedly, nope. The last moments we had, were just compensation. I got her to clear out the pain she put me through. Lisa was holding me back. She saw Rebecca was hurting. I firmly told Rebecca that she needed to leave, and she did. The aftermath. She repeated what she did before. She told everyone that I cheated, and I was the asshole. This time, I took it with pride. Everyone saw her for the dirtbag she was. She cheated on me and forced me to pay a high price by falsifying abuse claims. Then she wants me to raise her kid from her affair partner, as my own, and date her? The last we connected was in December of last year. She wrote me a letter on how sorry she is, because she can't imagine putting me through the pain that she already put me through. She hoped I live a better life. Last I heard, she was completely uninterested in dating. Looks didn't improve. As of me, you can guess it easily. Lisa and I stopped dating. 
there were other differences between us. Not just what happened. People who are saying I'm worse than my ex. Can you please, point out how I am worse than her? I loved her and she cheated on me. She cost me my home, my job, my image, my reputation and my friends. I was an abuser to everyone. I gave her a taste of her own medicine. Yes, I did by hurting someone else, but now I'm worse than her? I may emotionally scarred her. But that's what she did to me. I'm not looking for judgment. I'm sharing my revenge story, and this is nuclear revenge. I divorced my ex-wife over five years ago, for repeatedly cheating on me with over 13 different men and two women. To give you some background, my ex and I used to swing, until the last year of our marriage. Things had spiraled out of control, so I said that I was done swapping partners. Unfortunately, she didn't agree with me and kept hooking up with guys behind my back. Six months prior to our divorce, my oldest child was diagnosed with a life-threatening illness. I won't go into details to preserve my anonymity. She started to crack under the pressure and started to drink a lot, putting herself and our children in danger. It got so bad, that I moved out of the house for a couple of weeks and took our kids with me. During this time, her best friend, we'll call her Amy, approached me, because my ex had disclosed all of her dirty deeds to her at a girl's night out a couple of days ago. She disclosed that she had been sleeping with a new guy every single night, and getting intoxicated while she had the kids with her. She also told Amy that she went out one night a month ago, and left our three-year-old and four-year-old kids at home alone while they slept, so she could meet a guy. Amy said that my ex planned on filing for divorce, once she drained some additional money from me, while living rent-free in my home. Amy and I were both disgusted and knew that things had to come to an end. My ex hated living in the same house with me, because she truly hated me and couldn't go mess around with her flock of desperate simps. We had to come up with a plan to get her out of the house and document all of her poor behavior, so we could limit her custody of the children. Step 1, I moved my happy ass back into the house and plopped down on the bed, right next to her. She lost her mind, saying that she wanted me out of the house now, and would call the police if I didn't comply. What she didn't know, was that I was recording the audio of our conversation. I told her to pound sand and she called the cops, reporting me for domestic violence. Well, the police showed up in no time and had me in cuffs so fast, it made my head spin. The detective came to the squad car to talk to me and I let him listen to the recording. The longer he listened, the more his anger towards my wife grew. Before long, we switched positions and she ended up being the one in cuffs. They put her in the squad car and she got to spend the night in jail. She went to stay with Amy for the next week as she wasn't allowed back at our house, I got a restraining order. During this week, she went on a veritable spending spree buying herself a new laptop, new iPhone, full retail price, and a new wardrobe. She drained our bank account and started to dip into my savings. Amy also confirmed that she was drinking heavily at her house, to the point that she threw up and defecated on herself all over her bathroom. Amy video recorded her bender for posterity's sake and provided me with 20 minutes of video showing a woman out of control drunk. The next day I went and withdrew all of our money from the savings account, and deposited them in my new bank account, so I would have money to pay the bills. I closed that account, so she couldn't use overdraft protection and leave me on the hook for the overages. I closed all of our joint credit cards and transferred all of my investment accounts into an account, solely in my name. She found out. Truth be told, she lost it when she found out that she had no money to burn through anymore. She told Amy that she was contemplating to hurt herself, because things had gotten so bad. I despise my ex, but I didn't want to see her harm herself at all. Amy convinced her that she needed some help, and went with her to check into an inpatient mental hospital. This worked out fantastic because she was getting the help she needed, but it also showed that she was a danger to herself and the kids. It was time to put the last part of our plan into action, and seal the deal. I went for a consult at my attorney to start the divorce proceedings and complete the needed paperwork. My attorney was appalled at the actions of my ex, and was 100% on board with helping me get primary custody. He filed my divorce decree, and also got the judge to agree to a temporary restraining order until our initial hearing. We served her the papers while she was in the hospital, and set the initial hearing for two weeks. The initial hearing came and she showed up with her attorney. Since it was a pre-litigation hearing, they didn't know what information we had. She got on the stand and started lying her heart out, telling the judge how abusive I was, and that is what pushed her into the mental hospital. 
she made a very compelling case, and even put on a Grammy award-winning act. But then, it was my turn. My attorney presented all of the evidence, even consisting out of videos and bank records. The defining moment was when my attorney called Amy to the stand to testify. She told an appalling story about a neglectful mom who was completely out of control. A story about a mother who had substance abuse issues, that were only getting worse. My ex couldn't close her mouth the whole time while Amy was on the stand. She made her attorney look like an idiot, as all of her lies were now being exposed and were contrary to what she told him. When the dust settled, I was awarded sole custody, and she was awarded supervised visitation until she went to rehab and got additional treatment. We quickly settled out of court agreeing to a graduated visitation schedule once she complied with rehab and mental health counseling. I got the house, after paying her a portion of the equity, got to keep all of my investment accounts, and get to see my kids 80% of the time. She got to go live with her mom for the next two and a half years, and jump from job to job. Life is pretty good five years down the road, and is even better knowing that she isn't my problem anymore. This happened between me and my ex. I'm a 25-year-old male, she's a 24-year-old female. I'll keep it short, but provide you only with the most important details. To start, the first month was amazing, like a dream relationship, we had been friends for a while before she suddenly confessed her feelings towards me. I had hid my feelings, as we were meant to only be friends, so I jumped at the opportunity to reciprocate and state the feelings I had for her. The second month was not as bad, only having a single argument as she invited her neighbor over, to what was supposed to be a date between us. After a good talk, we sorted it out and made up. The third month was when the problem started. We had planned out a date, which was planned on the Saturday, as she couldn't be there for the initial date we set on Friday, as she had to work that day. I understood and changed the date of the booking at the special restaurant. I hadn't told her anything about this restaurant, as I wanted it to be a surprise, instead of the usual home movie. So I asked her to keep that day clear, and to dress well for the date, that would be extra special. So the day comes up, and only an hour before the date she texts me, saying that she won't be there tonight, as she was going to see a movie with a casual friend. I was honestly furious, as I had already paid the pre-booking fee and told her over a week in advance. I tried to call her, but her phone was turned off. I called her best friend and he had no idea what was happening either. The next morning, I talked to her and she starts arguing with me, saying I should have told her it was a special restaurant date. After about an hour of arguing, she finally admitted that she was in the wrong for what she did. I accepted her apology, and we took a day as a break to calm and clear any bad feelings from the situation. After that, the relationship started to decline, I stayed the same, but she started to get more and more distant, eventually after three weeks of no intimacy, not even kisses, I confronted her, asking what's going on. She says she needs a week to think and wanted to be single for that. I told her I don't mind taking a break if that's what she needs, but I don't see why being single is needed for that. She argued that it's for her freedom, and I realized it was for another guy. So we broke up. But then she starts spreading lies about why we broke up to other people. Telling them I was cheating and being abusive towards her. Thankfully, the friends she spread it to wouldn't believe her as we had all known each other for years, her being introduced to them through me. Her best friend had tried to defend me and she had blocked him for it. But he knew her friend group and through them, we discovered the truth. Apparently, she had been cheating the last three weeks of the relationship. Remember the casual friend she went to the movies with? It was a Tinder hookup. And she tried starting a relationship with him as soon as we broke up. To nobody's surprise, he wasn't interested and stopped contact by blocking her. The guy had recorded them having sexy time and uploaded it to adult sites. The theme of this video, was that she was cheating during it. So you can imagine that the scandal forced her to drop out of university, as it spread like wildfire. Then I decided I wanted my revenge, it wasn't much as I knew her parents and were really close, they knew nothing that was going on and assumed we just broke up. Her parents though, are super religious, along with her grandmother. So although painful, I found the links to the videos, yes it's plural. I downloaded them and took screenshots of the breakup between us. Then I contacted her family, saying that I had something I wanted to share, created a group chat with her parents, grandmother and ex-best friend. Then I unloaded all screenshots and videos, along with a text message explaining everything that's happened. There was no contact for about a week, then her ex-best friend filled me in on the situation. 
she had lost her scholarship due to dropping out of university. Her grandmother, after seeing the proof, cut her from the will and disowned her. Her parents followed by evicting her from the house as well as support being cut off. She now works a minimum wage job and sharing a home with friends to make ends meet. Had been dating this girl for almost seven years. During which we lived together for six. My line of work was electronic consulting, setting up systems with tons of sensors. Good money, but a lot of travel hours. Just setting the stage here. Anyhow, at one point got the feeling that something was off. Nothing I could put my finger on, but a gut feeling. I'm pretty good in following my gut feelings, so I decided to put some proof in the pudding. While she was out, I had placed a sound-activated recorder in each room of the condo. Very small device as the storage was on my office PC. This was done on a Friday afternoon. Spent the weekend with her and had a good time. Sunday night, before bed, I took my luggage and tools out to my car and also popped a GPS tracker on her car. Left the next morning and headed to my next site. The plan was that I was supposed to be away for two weeks. I talked to her daily for the first week, the second week was really hit and miss. Times that she was normally home I would call, and it would go to voicemail. I would ask her about it when I spoke to her again and I got quite a few excuses, work meetings, late dinners, helping her brother, etc. Two weeks end and I come home, head almost immediately to my office. I see a ton of activity on the recorders during the first week, and barely anything the second, save a loud vehicle driving by. So I go back to the first week's recordings and find that she is talking. She was talking to some guy on her phone. To make it even better, she has it on speaker, so I get to hear both sides of the call. Turns out, she has been cheating from pretty much day one of our relationship. So I decided right then and there, revenge was in order. I had to find out who this guy was. Through some sleuthing I found out she met this guy, his wife and family, at a campground she worked at before I met her. Found out where they lived and then checked phone records. This being a few years back, people still had house phones, so I looked up the number. Great, it's listed. I called the number and a guy answered the phone. I was prepared for this, so in a professional voice asked to speak to Mrs. Smith. He yelled for her and a woman got on the phone. I asked her if she knew, my soon-to-be ex, girlfriend. She said yes, that they had invited her to their house a few times after meeting her at the campground. Wow, that was news to me. I told her we couldn't speak in detail right now, but if she would call me back when she was free to talk, I'd explain everything. I gave her my cell number and hoped that she would be curious enough to call. Sure enough, two days later she called. I explained everything that I had recorded. At first she was very skeptical. I told her that I would make a copy of the recording and send it to her. She said okay, but still was skeptical. So my work was set in motion. I went to a local recording studio along with the files and explained what I needed. They took all of the separate recordings and put them together, so when she wandered through the house, it picked up from the different recordings to make the conversation complete. They then burnt these audio recordings to CD, it took five CDs to cover it all. I then mailed the CDs to Mrs. Smith, registered mail. Then I waited. About 10 days go by. She finally calls me, she's very calm. She tells me that the day before, she went and filed divorce papers. Her husband works on an oil rig, and he's out on the rig for the next two weeks. After she listened to the CDs I sent her, she gave them to her lawyer. Mr. Cheater made a shit ton of money doing what he does, and so over the years, they had bought a lot of toys like campground plots, a boat, RV, etc. She made it clear that she was going for half. I got off the phone laughing to myself. Couldn't happen to a nicer guy, after the things I heard on those recordings. During all this time, I never said a word to my girlfriend. I acted as normal as possible. In fact, I still left the tracker on her car. I didn't think that would produce anything. Things were quiet for another week. Then came the day when hell was starting to break loose. My girlfriend was wandering around the house like she was lost. I asked her what was wrong, and she told me a friend of hers was getting a divorce. I said that's a shame and went about my business. That evening, she was out on the deck talking to someone on the phone. I didn't really pay attention, except for the fact that every so often she was raising her voice. Phone call ends. She comes back in and goes straight back to the bedroom. I hear a bunch of rustling around so I walk back to the door and see her packing clothes. I ask her what she's doing and get no reply. 
she finishes packing and walks out to her car, throws the suitcases in and leaves. Two weeks go by and not a word from her. I got a call from Mrs. Smith and she updated me on her world. She had her husband served with the papers and infidelity was the reason. He denied of course, but she was able to throw details that she said stopped him dead in his tracks. She confirmed the phone call that my girlfriend had the night she left, was with her. She said she never raised her voice, but my, now ex, girlfriend tried swearing up and down that nothing ever happened. Mrs. Smith then put out some details to my girlfriend, enough to let her know she was caught. Mrs. Smith implied that she found out on her own, and her next step was going to be, that she was about to tell me. This is why my cheating girlfriend left so quickly. So, this leaves my handling of the cheaty girlfriend. Credit card, gone. Car, I called to have repossessed. Utilities, arranged to be shut off. Insurance, cancelled, all of her belongings left behind, were sent by movers to her dad's house along with a note for the reason. By the way, he lives two states away. We lived in a condo, so I arranged for it to be shown for sublease. I was packed and moved in four days. New condo, gated community with guard shack. The car was finally picked up. They got it while she was at work. Dealership worked with me on selling the car and I just paid the difference. Mrs. Smith did win her divorce decree and got her half. Mr. Cheater aka Mr. Smith, never counted on anything, too worried about his company finding out the dirty secrets. Never heard from the ex ever again. You stay till the end, which means you're the one I make these episodes for. I want to take this moment to thank you. I really appreciate you because you bring me a great amount of joy. Subscribe for future uploads and show your vengeful devotion by tickling the like button without mercy. Do you have any experiences surrounding the topic of this episode? Share yours below. I'll join the conversation and I'll be seeing you in the next one.